Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking through the Doppler effect and pitch. These are two really important ideas in the study of waves for physics classes or physical science or even as the basis for an AP physics class. So let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, I want you to think about what happens when an ambulance passes. You've all heard this before or something similar depending on the country you're in. I want you to focus to how high the sound is to start off with and then how low it gets immediately on passing the observer. All right, in a similar way, I want to talk about what happens when a car passes. Again, I want you to think about how high the sound is when it's approaching the observer and how low it gets once it passes the observer. Well, it turns out that that is a real effect. That's not just some camera trick or post-editing processing or something. That's real life. When something passes you, the pitch changes. And so what I want to do is start off by defining what we mean by a pitch. And so a pitch is how high or how low a sound is perceived to be. So if you have a clarinet player who's playing a high note versus a clarinet player who is playing a lower note, it really depends on the frequency of the sound wave. So if it's a higher frequency, then we perceive it to be a higher note on a musical scale, let's say. And a lower frequency would be a lower note on a musical scale. It has to do with the source that is vibrating. In the case of a clarinet, it's the reed. In the case of someone speaking, it's their vocal folds or vocal cords that are vibrating back and forth. So for a large man, he would have bigger vocal cords or vocal folds and they would vibrate back and forth at a lower frequency than like a little girl, for instance. So the little girl would have a higher pitch voice and the large man would have a lower pitch voice. And so again, I want you to think about and, th and imagine in terms of pitch, now I can use that term, in terms of pitch, as the car approaches the observer, what happens? And as the car passes and moves away from the observer, what do you notice in terms of pitch? All right, and so hopefully you're able to hear that. Let's go ahead and continue and think about why that is in terms of the physics and the waves involved. So first of all, I do want to talk about what happens if you have a source. If you have a stationary source, it'll put out waves. These are compressional waves, also called longitudinal waves. And usually in a class, you'll study them as moving in one dimension, just from like left to right, let's say. And that's a good way to begin to learn about these things. But in reality, they're going to move in three dimensions. Here it's depicted as a two-dimensional sound source that's spreading out in all of those directions in the x and the y axis. All right, well, fair enough. Well, what happens if you have a source that is moving at some great speed, like we have on the right-hand side? So for the source on the right-hand side, it's moving not quite at the speed of sound, but pretty close to the speed of sound. I want you to imagine what would happen if you were the observer with the red dot that I'm moving and think about the frequency of the sound waves as they approach you and as they pass you. What is true about the frequency of the sound waves as they approach you? Well, hopefully you can see that the frequency of those sound waves as they approach you is going to be higher and as the source moves away from you, it's going to be lower. And if you can understand that, then you understand the basis of the Doppler effect. So that is the basis of the Doppler effect. It's not a hard concept to grasp, but it is really important, not just in sound, but in light as well. It has applications even in astronomy and understanding how things work across the universe. All right, well, let's see a couple other examples. What would happen if something was moving at the speed of sound? Well, what you would get would be something like this. You would still have the Doppler effect in an effect if this red dot that I am moving represents the observer as that wall of sound passes the observer, what would happen is they would be hit with a wall of sound. Actually, if you know something about superposition, you know that those waves would build on top of each other and build to a very strong wave. And it would sound very loud as the source passed the observer. And that would be called a sonic boom. 
All right, well, if something was moving past the speed of sound, they would have a trailing sort of cone. They would still have a wall of sound energy sort of following them in, in kind of a tight cone pattern. And there would be a lot of energy building up behind that sound source, but it wouldn't be as concentrated as you might get right here. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at another way to visualize this. Again, let's say that you are the observer here. This is the sound source as it approaches you the sound waves are bunched together as it passes you the sound waves are farther apart so there's a lower frequency pitch as it's past the observer as it's approaching the observer there's a higher frequency pitch and so that's what the doppler effect is i want you to try to listen for that once again with the audio of the car here All right, and I do want to say something that's very important, and that is this is a general property of waves. So it doesn't just happen with sound, it happens with light as well. And if we look at the spectral lines right here, in other words, if we get the light from the sun, this is like the light from the sun, and it's got some absorption spectrum right here where these lines where energy is absorbed at those certain frequencies or colors of light, that's the pattern that we would see from our sun. Now if you have distant galaxies, they will have a similar pattern, but what tends to happen is they all seem to be red shifted, more shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. You can see that right here, it's like everything's been shifted up on the right hand side from our point of view right here. What does that mean? Well, that means most galaxies are spreading apart. This is one of the reasons why we know the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate because galaxies are generally spreading apart from each other and that means what we see from them is going to be shifted because of the Doppler effect and the great speeds that are involved. It's kind of like saying we have an ambulance that's moving away from us and so the pitch sounds lower. Well, in a similar way, we could say stars are receding from our point of view, from our point of reference, and as a result, they look more red than they should, more red shifted than they should be, which is fascinating, but also tells us something about the universe, it tells us that our universe is expanding. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any comments down below, let me know. I'm gonna be covering all of the content for a typical year in physics, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.